for some impressions. A guy with a mustache. Look at me. I'm a guy with a mustache. How y'all doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm here with Brad, the uh, shape-shifting vision casting leader, and Drago, the Russian dog. How you doing, Brad? Man, it's it just it dang old complicated, you know, man. It's like a dang old Rubik's Cube, man. You like talking about any blue, red, man, then you get to one side, and then you like mess, mess it up the other side, man. That's a shame. Uh, Drago's around here somewhere. He's probably eating something that I love. <laughs> something that I would per prefer not be eaten, but you know, uh, like I said, he's a uh, well, he's a Russian. Say, guess the TV theme music from the intro, and you'll win a prize. Tell them what they'll win, Brad. You're watching the most exciting game you will ever see on your TV set. Telstar by Coleco with three different games. Telstar Tennis with digital scoring, variable speeds. Telstar Hockey. Each player controls a goalie plus a forward on the other side. Oops, a goal. And Telstar Singles Handball, a game you play yourself. Telstar Handball, Tennis, Hockey. All three at an exciting low price. For great family fun, hitch your TV to a Telstar by Coleco. If you missed the uh, TV theme music to the David Ibiomi uh, video, uh, here it is. This is Jim Rockford. At the tone, leave your name and message. I'll get back to you. So today we're going to be looking at John Eckhart. He calls himself a prophet. Uh, he has a pretty big following. You know, some of y'all have asked, where do you find these people? Well, a lot of them show up in my suggested videos thing on YouTube. YouTube is there really getting really uh, getting to know my algorithms or whatever it is, I guess. Anyway, here is uh, Apostle John Eckert and his teaching entitled Wisdom of the Hawk. What? Wisdom of the Hawk. Today we're going to discuss the wisdom of the hawk. The name is Hawk. One of the wisest birds that God has created. And it's going to be something new, something fresh. And I know that you're going to enjoy this teaching because there's some principles we're going to learn from the hawk. Don't make this any more difficult than it has to be. For one of the creatures that God created. And I have been so excited about sharing on the subject of wisdom. Also, if you want to sow or give, you can do that through giving stars. I see someone has already done that. And if you do that during the broadcast, I will consistently bless you, speak over your life, decree, prosperity, abundance, wealth, resources. Now, wait a minute there, Apostle. Are you telling me that if I send you money, you will decree blessings and prosperity over my life? <laughs> You know, Peter, who some would consider to be the main most apostle, actually said not to do that in Acts chapter 8. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. In 2 Corinthians 11, Paul called men who do that uh, false apostles. Seriously, it's, it's in the Bible. Uh, Paul said these guys who charge you money for their apostolic uh, teachings are, uh, yeah, you know, they're, uh, they're not really apostles. I'm uh, beginning to have my doubts about this man's apostleship. I want to decree some things from the book of Psalms. Psalms 1, whatever you do, let it prosper. That's uh, Psalm 1, not Psalms 1. It's, it's a pet peeve of mine. 
Now, anyway, yeah, that psalm is about Jesus. Uh, the apostles always talked about Jesus. They preached him from the Old Testament. It was like their mission or something. Seriously, they, they were like obsessed with Jesus for some reason. Psalms 23, the Lord will be your shepherd. You will not lack. You will not want that he would anoint your head with oil. Your cup would run over. There'll be an overflow in your life. Psalm 23, that's a gospel song. Uh, you can't declare the gospel over my life, apostle. I, I hate to break it to you. Uh, Psalms 35, that God would take pleasure in your prosperity. Psalm 35, it's about Jesus too and his gospel, but he's not going to mention Jesus in his gospel. Uh, just a heads up, this is an apostle of Jesus who doesn't talk about Jesus. But now well, we're going to talk today about one of God's creatures, the hawk. It's going to be a hard night. And I'm going to show you that not only has God given man wisdom, but God even gives certain creatures wisdom. Wisdom, remember God created everything through wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom was with God before creation. Now, that's because Jesus was with God before creation. He is the wisdom of God, Jesus. That's what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.24. Uh, as an apostle of Jesus, I, I'm a little surprised that John Eckert uh, doesn't know this. Uh, I got to tell you. And God created the heavens, the earth, man, the universe, the oceans, the weather, the clouds. Everything was created by God's wisdom. So wisdom knows creation and therefore wisdom, since we're created by wisdom, wisdom can teach us how to live. Let me say that again. You really don't have to. God has given us a handbook for living. The word of God is a handbook of how you should live skillfully. Actually, that's false. That's moralism. The Bible is a handbook that reveals God to us, specifically in the person of his son, Christ Jesus, who came to save his people from their sins. His apostles talked about this uh, all the time. I'm uh, surprised you disagree as an apostle. Now, if you reject that and say, I don't need that, then you're left to your own wisdom, which will often cause you to be involved in things and live a life of shame, poverty, lack, destruction. That it will often cause that? Now, the apostles of Jesus said it always causes that. I'm not kidding. Did you not get their memo, uh, Apostle John Eckhart? The scripture says, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Yep, when you find out that you don't have to be destroyed because of your sin, because the Son of God came and died in your place, and you get to go live with him forever in heaven, it, it, it tends to make you um, kind of happy. So wisdom brings happiness. God does not want you to live a painful, defeated life. He wants you to be successful in living. Huh. Now, the other apostles apparently didn't know that because they never said it. And they certainly didn't uh, model it. They were all, well, you know, they, they were all um, tortured to death. As I study this subject, I'm, I'm seeing that there's wisdom in creation. Man, of course, is God's highest creation made in the image of God. But God created all creatures and many of them have certain characteristics of wisdom. They have wisdom to survive. They have wisdom to thrive. Uh, they have wisdom to become abundant. The, they have wisdom to live. Even creatures, even animals have wisdom. No, they don't. When Jesus, for example, told his disciples to be as wise as serpents, he didn't mean that serpents are wise. It was a figure of speech. Uh, Jesus used figures of speech, just like all the rest of us. A animals do not have wisdom. And if you think they do, not only are you not an apostle, you are ignorant of basic biology. But, you know, go ahead with your little lesson there, Apostle. So if God put wisdom in the serpent, if God put wisdom in the hawk. I don't know about that, General Hawk. How much more will God put wisdom in you? Now, let's talk about the wisdom of the hawk. Being an out of work actor is a great lifestyle. Job 39, 26, he says, does the hawk fly by thy wisdom and stretch her wings toward the south? So God is really humbling Job and telling Job, Job, do you give the hawk wisdom?
to fly toward the south. Now, I'm, I'm going to assume all of us here have been to school. Uh, most of us probably finished high school. Some went to college. Some finished college. And we all know that the hog doesn't really know it's flying south, right? I mean, we know that, right? Does anyone not know that? If you read chapter uh, Job chapter 39, it's all about God's work in creation, how he programs his creatures to do all the marvelous things they do. It actually lines up with what we know about biology. It's, it's pretty cool. Job was writing about things we wouldn't know for four or 5,000 years. And once again, science eventually catches up with God's word. That's just one verse of scripture, but there's a lot to unpack in this one verse. I'm amazed when I study scripture, how much is loaded in one verse of scripture. He's asking Job a question. He's, tell, he's really showing Job that your wisdom does not compare to my wisdom. He's really humbling Job. At the end of this whole discourse, Job repents and humbles himself and God delivers Job, turns his captivity and gives him twice as much as he had before. Now, all this is true, so we'll just skip to the wisdom of the hawk. What can we learn about uh, the wisdom from the hawk? So God has given wisdom to the hawk to fly. The, the hawk flies by wisdom. So the hawk is sitting around going, hey, I've got these wings, I've got these feathers, I've got this streamlined body. How about if I flapped my wings, I could fly? You no, know, the, the, the hawk doesn't even know he's flying. He has no concept of it. He has no concept of things. God gave animals instinct. They were not created in his image, you see. The hawk soars by wisdom. Now, there are hundreds of species of hawks. Some translations call this the hawk or the falcon. Uh, so it's, it's a whole species of bird. It's not one species, but the hawk is a very majestic bird. The eagle, of course, is a very majestic bird, and they're known by their wisdom, the speed of the hawk, the quickness of the hawk, the flight of the hawk, the way the hawk can soar is by God's wisdom. Now that says a lot to us today, spiritually, because God wants you to soar. Uh, does he? Uh, what do you mean by that? Now we had a discussion in our, our Impact University. We've just come out of a dream challenge. Wait, what? Our Impact University. We've just come out of a dream challenge. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I, I thought I'd misheard you there for a second. And in the discussion, I didn't plan on doing this, but I might as well talk about it. Sure, why not? The question was, uh, have, do you, have you ever flown in your dreams? So this was like a theological discussion then of God and his word, his gospel, his works. Uh, <laughs> no, it was, have you ever flown in your dreams? Yeah, just like the apostles in the Bible. Uh, they were always talking about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just imagining Peter and James chained together in a Jerusalem prison. You know, water, water uh, dripping, rats chewing, bugs crawling. And James turns to Peter and says, Peter, have you ever flown in your dreams? <laughs> and then they, you know, come and cut James's head off for preaching the gospel of Christ. Have you ever seen yourself flying in your dreams? And uh, someone said, what does it mean when you're flying in your dreams? Now, in some cultures, not all, but some African uh, prophets teach that if you fly in your dreams, it could be a sign of witchcraft. Now, now which prophets were these exactly? So the question was, uh, am I a witch am I, if I'm flying in my dreams? Well, of course, uh, that, that was the question. Uh, the question of all questions. All down, all down. <laughs> Hey, bud, what's your problem? <laughs> These videos, man, they really like start to mess with my head. Now, all down through history, men have pondered it, thinking, am I a witch if I'm flying in my dreams? <laughs> I'm sorry, I might seem a bit overly sarcastic here, but, but really, this, this, this guy's asking for it. He, he's asking for it, and he's asking for money. He promises to decree prosperity over your life if you send him money. So, so no, I'm, I, I, I'm not sorry. Sorry, but I'm, I'm not sorry. 
And so I got on because I have I have experienced that in my dream, soaring. And I said, well, remember when you interpret dreams, it's not just one interpretation. It's not like you just go to a book, read it, and one symbol applies to everyone. It depends on your circumstance and what the symbol means to you. Now, is that in the Bible somewhere, Apostle? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. It's not, by the way. I know that, and I'm not even an apostle. Now, in some cultures, if there's a lot of witchcraft, I'm not saying there's a, a uh, there's more witchcraft in Africa than there is in America. America has a lot of witchcraft, okay? Yay, white people. But in some cultures that have rooted, rooted in witchcraft, maybe in their culture, flying can represent witchcraft. There's even a verse in Ezekiel that through witchcraft they made souls to fly. I, I put that verse in. I'm not I'm not going to teach on this in depth. Maybe someone said, please teach on this. How about please teach on Jesus? Uh, is anyone saying that in the chat? Anyone asking the apostle of Jesus to actually teach on Jesus? But flying can also mean soaring. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. That's Isaiah 40. You know what they're waiting on? Jesus, really. That's what Isaiah 40 is about. The coming Messiah. And he came. And then he ransomed his people, rose from the dead, and went back to his father. And he sent his apostles out into the world to tell the world about all that he had done. Not to tell them about the wisdom of hawks or the cunning of snakes, but about the Son of God who came and took upon himself the sins of God's people. And that's that's really the gist, re really the thrust of an apostle's ministry. Uh, th that's what Jesus said anyway. I guess this apostle uh, didn't get the message. So what it tells us is that wisdom will give you the ability to soar spiritually. It'll give you the ability to go to another level. It'll give you the ability to be free, to go higher. To, it also, the hawk is a very quick, speedy bird. And wisdom will give you the ability to move quickly, to move fast, to accelerate, to soar. That's one of the things that wisdom would do. Wisdom will cause us to soar in life. So let's just think about Isaiah 40. What do you say? I'm sure the apostle won't mind if we actually think about God's word, especially those scriptures pertaining to Christ Jesus, of whom this guy is supposed to be an apostle sent from Jesus. That's what the word apostle means, sent ones. Jesus sent him to tell us about uh, hawks, apparently. Now, this Isaiah 40 is quoted several times by several apostles in the New Testament. Matthew 3, 3, John 1, 23, Romans 11, 34, 1 Peter 1, 25. And none of them talk about no wisdom of the hawk. None of them talk about soaring over your problems, rising in your career, flying through your breakthroughs. Uh, they, they all talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, this guy, though, he, he's, he's not an apostle of Jesus. He, he's an apostle of the hawk. Now for those that are sowing and those that are giving stars, again, I decree favor. I'm, I'm going to go somewhere here, so don't leave, because I'm going to deal with something in the last part of this verse that's going to really, really give you an understanding of one of the major principles of wisdom, okay? But I decree favor, grace, prosperity, blessing, abundance, multiplication, thousands, increase. I, I decree harvest, breakthrough. Thank you, those that are sowing. Someone just sold on PayPal. God bless you. Someone sold I decree favor, grace, blessing, prosperity, wisdom, bring favor, grace, right decisions, business decisions. Who am I? The crown and glory of the creation of God. Why am I here? To bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. What is wrong with the world? Me and everyone like me who refuse to acknowledge the supremacy of Christ and live in pursuit of the supremacy of self. How can what is wrong be made right? The spotless, 
sinless Lamb of God is crushed, rejected, and killed to pay a debt that he did not owe on behalf of sinners who could never pay him back. This is the supremacy of Christ in truth. As we walk through the highways and byways and look into the lifeless eyes of individuals who have bought the lie, let us rest assured that we possess the answer and we are possessed by the answer. The answer is Christ. the riches, prosperity, abundance, and again, I speak Psalm 1, that whatever you do will prosper. Psalm 35, God would take a pleasure in your prosperity. Psalm 37, you would inherit the land. Psalm 66, you will come into a wealthy place. Our Psalms 112, that wealth and riches would be in your house. Psalms 118, that God will save and send prosperity now. Let the blessing of the Lord make rich, according to the book of Proverbs, and let you walk in a, a large, abundant place. We shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto us. So I issue that decree. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet Matthew 10 shall receive a prophet's reward. Let, let the reward of the Lord come upon you and let it be your due season D-E-W. Let it be your due season D-U-E. Let things that are due to you, land, property, settlements that rightfully belong to you, things that were stolen from you that are rightfully yours, let it be your due season D-U-E. And let that which is due to you come during this particular season. I pray and I decree and I bless and I speak over those that are sowing and giving during this broadcast. Amen. Yeah, okay. I'm glad that's over. <laughs> Some of this stuff, man, it's tough. Really tough, you know. But, uh... <laughs> You know, it's a blessing too. Like I learned so much about God's word by studying errors. You know, because you know they they say they quote a verse of scripture, just paraphrase it, and I'm like, well, it's, you know, I don't know. Let's see what that really means. And then so I study the whole passage. I'm just constantly amazed, amazed at our God, at His works. Uh, and that's you know that that's really the, the 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 thing about the Old Testament. It's all about the works of God. The things he does, the things he has done, and it all pertains to uh, to the gospel. So we knowing the gospel now, believing the gospel, looking back, we can see how God orchestrated all this in the Old Testament. It's just it's amazing, you know, and it's just, uh, you, you know, Pentecost, it's what they said. They received the Holy Spirit, and what did they do? They started proclaiming the mighty works of God. Well, what would those works have been? It would have been the works of the Old Testament, how they pertain to this Pentecost, this forming of the church, this calling of, of Christ's bride. Love the Bible, man. I, I guess that's why when I see things like this, it really uh, upsets me because uh, I do really love the Bible. It's almost like a, like a family member being like... Uh, humiliated or or like dishonored in some way and, and i think if you know god then then you must know him love his word and, and, you, and you feel the same way but uh anyway i hope this was beneficial um y'all take care uh god bless love y'all and uh talk to you again soon